So, welcome. Um, I'm currently with Kelly Williams, who I studied with a long time ago, and is just actually really incredible. Um, she's just been over overseas in Barcelona, heading up uh, uh, the marketing for a company called... CEO Collaborative Forum. And what do they do? We are a community for CEOs to share challenges and help each other find solutions. So, pretty incredible role. I mean, it's... It's networking with the people who are decision makers across the world um, <laughs> and helping them to be better at what they do. And w what sort of stuff did you do in, in the role, the marketing role that you were in? Well, I helped the CEOs be better at what they do. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes it's as simple as that. Um, and what, it was really interesting. We were just having a conversation about life and business and, and our educations. And one of the things that we stumbled across, which I thought was relevant for this blog, was what we, what we were actually taught at university, as opposed to how the world really works now. Mm -hmm. um, digital being such a huge aspect of it. And everyone knows my role on it and, and how I've taught it and so on. But, Kel, I thought you could tell everyone just a little bit about how you feel now in, in the digital age without us having had formal digital courses. Well, I was just telling Josh that there seems to be so many roles in marketing, which is my area of interest, but they, they're really heavily relied on digital marketing, online marketing, social marketing, and because I don't have formal education in those areas, I feel like I shouldn't be applying. But then... Personally, I have a huge interest in these areas and I utilize them every day and I want to understand how I can take my personal interest and turn it into a professional where I can be an expert in these areas. So what I found fascinating about that co those comments was that I see, um, I see three sort of channels of people right now. There's people who... Um, self-proclaimed experts in the internet and many of them really aren't. There are people I see that are going to do courses. Um, I was just teaching a, a course down at Chisholm Institute of TAFE the other day that was full of marketing managers who had been in those roles for 10, 15, 20 years and they were listening to me for advice on stuff that largely they actually knew. And thirdly there's people who are like Kelly who have actually been doing digital marketing um, they just don't have this formal title amongst them, amongst themselves. And it's a really fascinating area. I, having worked in the digital space for so long, I really don't think that there's a huge difference between myself and Kelly. Because we had the same education um, and everything, I'm sure you agree, it comes down to basic marketing principles. Yes. So we were just talking about um, funnels. Right? And oh, actually... Betty, you were telling me about you know, the emails that you were sending out to CEOs and the pipelines that you are managing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all exactly the same principle. Yes, that's true, actually. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, what was I reading? I think it was uh, Ogilvy on Advertising, written in 1960-something or other. And back then he was talking about the advent of television and everyone was saying that it was going to completely change the marketing world. But it didn't change the marketing world at all. And he was the first one to say that. What it did was it was one more vehicle of communication. Yeah. Um, so out of interest, and I hold you in very high esteem in the, in the work world. Do you think nowadays that would you hire a graduate that had done a digital marketing course over one that hadn't? Or would you look more for um, what they say in the interview? Well, definitely how they come across in the interview and what they say and their ideas. What do you think? I, I'm, this is a genuine opinion. There's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. how did, would you, someone that's got a, a high distinction in digital marketing on their, on their academic transcript, would you hold them higher than someone even if they interviewed kind of mid-range? No, because there's one thing having a high distinction and there's another thing being able to apply it in the real world. So if they were able to have that high distinction and be able to show me how they've used their knowledge in a practical way, then yes, I would hold them 
high. So how about, how about on the other end of the scale? I'm sure everyone's really interested. Kelly, of course, dealing with all these CEOs who are, what were they, average age? Well, the average age of a CEO is about, well, of a first-time CEO is actually about 45. 45, yeah. Uh, but our members range from early 20s up until, you know, late 70s or so. So it's safe to say the bulk of the people you were dealing with missed the digital boom. Yes. So how did, that, how did you find them in relating to all of these concepts of email, social media, Google? Mm -hmm. Like, were they getting it? Were they just pushing it off to others? You know what was interesting is that they are very entrepreneurial. They're very... These particular people uh, were very quick and they um, were able to stay on top of this. But, of course... Being entrepreneurial, being business-minded people, if they have a weakness in online, in digital marketing, they have they know that they need to hire people that have a strength in that area. So whilst you know, especially you know, our parents <laughs> maybe are not so good with email, they don't know how to attach simple things like photos. But then you have people like these CEO members that I was around that were very savvy when it came to these things. Um, yeah. I think that really, that's so well said. It's, it's about, uh, I'm, I'm sure Kelly told me this, a good being a good CEO is about uh, getting the right people underneath you to support you. I've always felt that way when I manage people that I'm probably the least clever person in the room and that's my goal, <laughs> is to hire the people that are strong in various areas. So tell me, we're, we're almost out of time, but Talk to the aspiring and, and actual CEOs. Do you have a few tips and tricks that just came up over and over again to be good at what you do? Um, choose an area that you're passionate about. This is really the one key thing that I took away from these amazing people is that if you really truly have a passion, then you will overcome adversity and face the challenges and find solutions. If you're in it for, for different reasons, may it be money or, or something else, it does make it more difficult to overcome those challenges. So find your passion and follow that. It does sound cliche, but this is what has come from the 100 members that I got to meet um, on a very and have fantastic relationships with. Find the passion. You heard it straight from the <laughs> font of knowledge. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you, Josh. We'll see you again soon. <laughs> Bye.